Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Francesco, and I want to take a small portion of your time today to chat about major occupancies. This video is the final one in the series related to the topic of distinguishing between part three and part nine buildings. If you remember, in that video, I shared with you a method for distinguishing between part three and part nine buildings. And the great thing about that method was that it always works. I have linked that video for you in the description below. And, and if you have not had a chance to see that video, please don't worry about it. You can come back and watch it anytime you want because it's not going anywhere. The method I explain in that video is quite simple, I think. And it is based on correctly identifying three building characteristics. Building height, building area, and a building's major occupancy. Building height and building area have each been covered in separate videos which I will also link for you in the description. For this video, I want to focus on major occupancies, specifically about how major occupancy relates to the topic of distinguishing between part three and part nine buildings. The words major occupancy are specifically defined in the Ontario Building Code. As such, if we go to Division A, Article 1.4.1.2, define terms, we would find the following definition of major occupancies. Major occupancy means the principal occupancy for which a building or part of a building is used or intended to be used and is deemed to include the subsidiary occupancies that are an integral part of the principal occupancy. The major occupancy classifications used in this code are as follows. So you can see listed right next to me are all 13 major occupancies. You can also see that the definition that the building code provides is a bit of a mouthful. So I'm hoping that this video helps a little bit with that. All 13 occupancies go from A1 to F3. So simply put, the major occupancy of a building is a description of what that building is used for. So in its simplest form, major occupancy is about who and what as it relates to a building. The who refers to the people that are or will be using that building, whereas the what refers to everything else that is not people in that building. So for example, animals, furniture, equipment, or any other property that are or are meant to be in this building. But since this is the Ontario building code we're talking about, I want to show you exactly how the Ontario building code identifies major occupancies. And therefore, I want to show you how you can identify major occupancies. Fortunately for us, there are three places where you can find the full list of major occupancies. I'm going to show you where these three locations are, and then I'm going to tell you which ones to use and which ones to ignore for now. That's right. I will show you where the information is uh, relating to major occupancy, and then I will show you a better way to figure out the major occupancy. The first location, you saw it when I showed you the definition for major occupancy under Division A, Article 1.4.1.2. All major occupancies are listed here by group and division, including the name for each of these major occupancies from Group A Division 1 or A1, all the way down to Group F Division 3, or simply F3. The second location where you can find the major occupancies is in Division B Part 3 under Table 3.1.2.1. Now that you know of these two locations, I want you to listen carefully. If you're just getting started with the Ontario Building Code, if you are new at this Ontario Building Code thing, do not use either of these two locations as your first step in trying to identify the major occupancy of a building. 
because it is likely you'll make a mistake at the beginning. You can use these two locations I just gave you once you're much more experienced. But at the start, don't. You might be wondering why. Well, it's because if you are just starting to learn the Ontario Building Code, you may not realize that there are many occupancies that can fall under more than one major occupancy classification. I know, I know, I'm not being super clear. So maybe let me explain by way of an example. Let's say you have been asked to identify the major occupancy for a television studio. By that, I mean a place where television programs are produced, filmed, and sometimes transmitted, say like the news or any other type of educational or entertainment program. If you are just starting to learn about the Ontario Building Code and you referred to Table 3, 0.1, 0.2, 0.1 only, based on the description you find in this table, you might then think that television studios may be an assembly occupancy of some sort. So like an A occupancy of some sort, like A1 maybe, but you would be wrong. Or more appropriately, you would not be correct. And that's because Television studios may either be an A1 major occupancy or an F2 major occupancy, depending on whether a viewing audience is allowed or not. If a viewing audience is allowed, then that television studio is an A1 major occupancy. If a viewing audience is not allowed, then that television studio is an F2 major occupancy. How are you supposed to know that? I mean, nowhere that I can see in table 3.1.2.1 is any of this information I just gave you visible, right? How did I come up with it? Don't worry, because that is exactly what I want to share with you. If you're just getting started with the Ontario Building Code and you're learning to identify the major occupancy of a building, start with Appendix A instead. You may find Appendix A in Volume 2 of the Ontario Building Code Compendium. Think of Appendix A as a helpful addendum that helps to explain many of the items in Volume 1 of the Ontario Building Code. So all the items in Appendix A are identified exactly as they are in Volume 1, except for the letter A in front of them. So for example, Let's say we want more information about Table 3.1.2.1 in Division B, Part 3. You know, the table in Division B, Part 3, which contains the major occupancy classification. Well, what I would do is start in Appendix A and flip through it a little bit and find it right here. You see this? Not only is each and every major occupancy listed from Group A, Division 1, all the way to Group F Division 3, but, but, do you see how, and this is so cool, each and every one of these major occupancies also lists real examples for that major occupancy. So here, under A1, there are four examples of A1 occupancies. So. Motion picture theaters, opera houses, television studios admitting a viewing audience, and theaters, including experimental theaters. All of the other major occupancies listed here in Appendix A also have real example of each of those occupancies. This way, if you're ever wondering what type of major occupancy a specific building is, you can start in Appendix A and find out. Going back to the example of television studios, we found one possibility here under assembly occupancy, A1. But we don't stop there. We check all other occupancies until the very end, all the way to F3. This way, you would then also find that television studios may also be found under industrial occupancy F2. So, which one do you pick? Well, you would first have to find out whether or not the television studio that you are analyzing allows a viewing audience. If the answer is yes, then it's A1. If the answer is no, 
then it's F2. I hope this makes sense. If you're curious, I'm listing on the screen right here for you a few more examples of occupancies. They may be identified by more than one major occupancy. So if you want some homework <laughs> and see if you can identify which of these occupancies under which major occupancy categories these occupancies fall in. I think I've taken enough of your time. I hope that this video helps you a little bit with identifying the major occupancies of a building according to the Ontario Building Code without making a beginner's mistake. Take care, stay well, and have a lovely day.